gases, the periodic table, noble gases stable, halogens and alkali reactive gases. Good morning, Lake Nona. You may know me as Gabby Irons, and that still holds to be true. Welcome back to another episode of Science Spotlight. Today we are going to be performing the electrolysis of water, that is, decomposing water to give chlorine and hydrogen gases. Now, because this demonstration produces toxic substances, we recommend you do not try this at home, unless, of course, you're making educational science videos. Otherwise, I'd be a hypocrite. Let's jump right into the lab. The materials needed for this reaction are distilled water, two spoons or any other conductive materials to act as electrodes, kosher salt, a 9-volt battery, and a heat-resistant container, preferably Pyrex glass. Essentially, what we are trying to do here is break up H2O. To break these chemical bonds, we need a source of energy, and in this case, we are converting the chemical energy in a 9-volt battery to electrical energy that will run through the water. Now, because of the lack of ions in water, it is a poor conductor of electricity so we need to add an electrolyte. Here, we're using salt to allow the 9-volt battery to cause the reaction. We are using kosher salt because we know it is only NaCl, whereas table salt may contain other chemicals. We are also using distilled water instead of tap water for the same reason. In the chemistry world, it's important to control for any impurities that might interfere with the reaction. It is also important to adhere to any safety precautions, especially in this case, since the reaction can create lye, an extreme base which can burn skin. We are also producing chlorine gas, which is very toxic, so this must be done under a hood or in a well-ventilated area. Next, we press the battery terminals to the ends of the spoons. We need to make sure the spoons aren't touching to allow the current to flow through the water in an open circuit. You will see that as the reaction continues, the water starts to turn a yellowish-brown color. This is because of a solid that is formed from whatever metal is in the two spoons. Looking deeper into this reaction, we add salt to the collection of water molecules because as electrolytes, they have extra ions that allow the transfer of energy in the form of electricity. So now our solution is composed of water, sodium ions, and chlorine ions. Running electricity through the solution causes the bonds in the water molecules to break, leaving the hydrogen and oxygen molecules free to create new bonds. Sodium bonds with hydrogen and oxygen to create sodium hydroxide or lye. Chlorine and hydrogen combine with like ions to form their elemental gases. These are the gases in our bubbles. The color change seen in this reaction is due to a metal oxide that is being formed from the spoons. A solid that is deposited in a solution is called a precipitate. The chemical composition of this precipitate is unknown since we don't know what the spoons are made of. Thank you guys for tuning in to today's episode of Science Spotlight. We hope you found this video both entertaining and a little shocking. Gabby, what have I told you about wearing your gloves? Stay safe and stay nerdy, Lake Nona. I hate you so much. That was fire. <laughs> I don't care.